Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new, hi, hello. I am Esther and I am a nanny of four kids currently. So I have my fair share of nanny content on this channel. There was a video that I posted, one of my first nanny videos, um, story time of my first ever full-time nanny job. You guys can watch that up here. I'll link it down below as well. But basically I talk about my first full-time nanny experience and how that shaped me as a person and just all of the things that I, <laughs> I shouldn't have been at this job longer than maybe a week um so if you guys are curious what happened you can go watch that because it's a long video and it's a long story time but because of that experience i now going forward am very particular at um, jobs and stuff and thankfully i am extremely blessed with my current job i love it so much but i've been there for about two and a half years now this fall it'll be three years and I am very, very blessed. God definitely heard my prayers, especially after that first nanny incident. I was scared to, you know, start a new full-time nanny job. So in today's video, I am going to be just giving you 20 questions you should or could ask at your nanny interview, and it'll give you a lot more insight into the nanny position. Some of these questions may be answered in the job description already, but I would recommend, you know, writing these down. I will try to list all of the questions in order um, in the description below the video. So if you just want to like copy that and paste it in your notes, uh, whatever ones you want to ask, I definitely recommend asking at least a handful of these because because the interview will tell you a lot about the job and I'd say everything almost because what the parents will tell you, how the parents will answer those questions will determine everything. So if you guys are curious about those questions, then just keep on watching. Also, there are a lot more things you can ask, but this is just what I've compiled. This is just personally from my experience, what I find important to ask. Yeah, let's go. Also, I'm gonna let you guys know like why I put these questions down. A lot of them are from my bad experience. One more thing before I get started, none of these are in like order of importance. They're just, I just lay them all out. It's not like question number one is the most important that you have to ask. All right, number one, are you able to get raises? So this is an important question to ask because not a lot of nanny parents see like the importance in getting a raise and i've heard it that like oh you know i'm gonna give you like a 50 cents 50 cent raise in a year but i'm gonna pop out another kid and also throw in a few extra household tasks are you guys you know comfortable with you know the thought of raises and you can ask them like hey i was wondering if you guys are open to raises after an x amount of time just after reviewing me as a nanny and you know if you feel like i deserve a raise and of course you guys know deep down if you truly deserve a raise if, if you put it in if you've been putting in your all then you probably do deserve one but just ask them that because how they respond tells a lot my first red flag at my first nanny job was at the interview when i asked them about raises and they were not really open to giving me a raise and i was just kind of like okay like that's already a red flag because everybody should be getting raises at some point regardless of your job so i thought that was the number one red flag looking back if they say yes definitely we will go through how you're doing and you know we'll talk about things in a year and see how things are going great if they say no I would think on that and ask them why they're not open to that uh, because you should be getting a raise, especially if you're a long-term nanny. And if you're curious how often I've gotten raises, I've been there for two and a half years and I've gotten two raises. The first time I got a raise, I asked for the raise and the second time the dad brought it up and I was actually like, yeah, actually it's been a year, you know, give me a raise because I'm always doing, trying to do and always doing lots of work. If you see cats walking by or kittens, there's kittens here. Number two, what do you define as tidying up slash household work? Oh my goodness. I swear you guys need to go watch the video and I'm not saying this to like, you know, get more views. I'm dead serious. Like go watch that video because it just framed me so much in the work field and at interviews. It doesn't matter what job you are going to get interviewed for. It's important to ask the right questions because you will have like a gut instinct of like, you know, this does it sound like a good job or not? And I did have that gut instinct with my bad first nanny job. I just ignored it. Don't do that. Ask them what they define as tidying up, cleaning up, because everybody's definition is different. My first job, it was just like, you know, cleaning up the kitchen, cleaning up after the kids, 
cleaning up their toys, great, I can do that, I can handle that. Even doing the kids' laundry, I can handle that. No, it was doing the parents' laundry, it was making them food for work, um, it was coming into work on a Monday with the whole island and kitchen and stove, disastrous. Me barely being able to use any kitchen utensils. It was scrubbing their showers, it was organizing their pantry, it was doing so many extra things that I don't consider light tidying up. If that's something you want to pay me for, absolutely I'll do it. When you're just, you know, saying light tidying up and you describe it to me as like, you know, making sure the house doesn't look like a disaster when I come home from work, great, I can do it. I have nine siblings, I grew up cleaning toilets and cleaning the house and cooking 90% of my life, so I know how to do that. I'm just not gonna do it and not get paid for it. Next is, if a day gets cut short, will I get paid for that day? Um, or you could just say, will I have guaranteed hours? I mean, that's an important thing because things come up. They might not need you for a day and you just got eight to 10 hours cut off your pay. So ask them and if it's a regular thing, I would definitely talk to them about it. But if it's like here and there, I mean, it's not a bad thing, but I would definitely bring that up. Number four is what does discipline look like for you as parents and what are you comfortable with me doing? This is the, if not the biggest question I would ask. Like if out of all of this and um, just like the household work, this is what I would ask because this is going to make or break your job. It's gonna make you either hate your job or love your job. It's gonna make you have a hard time or an easy time because how the parents discipline the kids, if that does not align with you, you're gonna hate going to work. And I, oh, this is so common. If you're part of any nanny groups on Facebook or you just have nanny friends, this is so, so freaking common. So just ask them, give them a scenario. Ask them like, you know, if you're out in a park and the kid is not listening to you and is running away um, or is just, you know, not listening to you and going against what you're asking them to do, whether it's go home, whether it's play nice, whether it's share, what do you do in that circumstance? And if they just say, well, you know, I feel bad, like, you know, being stern with my kids or I feel bad with, you know, cutting them short of playtime and you're more of an approach of like, if you do not listen to me, we are gonna gather up our things and we're gonna head home because this, this behavior is not acceptable and you are the, you know, you are the parent, you're not their friend, you know? So if your view is like that and their view is completely opposite, you are gonna have so much trouble because you're going to come to work every day with kids that are just not disciplined the way you would like kids to be disciplined. And discipline, of course, does not mean like spanking or hurting them. It's just simply like, what are the consequences for their naughty behavior? And if your um, consequences are not the same, please, please, I'm begging you, do not start a job where your discipline does not align. Another thing is like, you know, you're coming back from, for example, if you're there like Monday through Friday, you're there for like 10 hours a day, which is roughly about how long I am there. Yeah, like 10 hours a day. If you are there like Monday through Friday, the kids will probably act the way, you know, they normally act around you during those days. But then like after a two day break, like Saturday and Sunday, you'll come back on Monday. And if your discipline does not align, you will be met with kids that you have to retrain and they'll be doing things and thinking that they can get away with them when you don't let them get away with things. Like, I don't know, making a mess and not cleaning up after themselves. And I'm not talking like one year olds, I'm talking like kids, like kids. So obviously age and context matter in these things, but that is very, very important. Please do not start a job where your discipline does not align. And you can also bring up many examples. You don't have to bring up just one. I would just, that's so important. Obviously vice versa, as parents, you don't want the nanny's discipline to not align with yours. Number five is ask them if they have nanny cameras in the locations. I honestly did not ask this, but it is actually a common thing on my nanny Facebook group. So I would ask that. I don't, I don't know if they had any cameras and I still don't know if they do, but I doesn't matter to me because I act the same on camera and off camera. I would say I'm a pretty strict nanny. I'm open book, I have nothing to hide. It's a little bit weird if you're being filmed at work. Not many people are being filmed at work and what they can do with that footage, you don't know. It's an, an invasion of privacy and you'd rather like know. And also like it's totally fine for them to wanna like see how you're handling the nanny kids, you know, but it's just, you just have to know, you know? Number six, can you eat at their house? And like, can you eat whatever you want in the fridge? Um, excuse me, so my first nanny job, 
it was fine up until their um, the dad's parents moved in for like a six month period and they would not allow me to eat from the fridge they would always like yell at me if i was even eating like an apple um and they didn't speak english so they would just be like no you're not supposed to be eating like they kind of did it in sign language and they would say like no and so that's really important because especially if you're there all day long what person has to bring breakfast lunch and dinner to work and then come home at a late evening time to prep all that like that's it's possible but it's extremely draining so definitely bring that up number seven you can ask them um will you be paid for miles if they prefer the kids to be out and about because gas is expensive nowadays but even so you're putting the mileage on your car and if they prefer for the kids to be out and about and get and get experiences and go to cool places and you're the one driving them all around and you're racking up so many miles like more than an average person i mean come on like you got to get paid for miles and along with that is asking them if you're going to be using your car and if you know they're comfortable with you driving them around if they're if you're using their car you don't have to get paid for miles number nine is what can or can't they eat uh this is a good question because at my current any job you know the parents don't want them eating fast food here and there like once every few months we'll go to chipotle um or someplace that's a little bit more healthier in my personal opinion um but nothing like mcdonald's or anything like that i'm not saying i never eat that i'm just saying that you have to respect the parents wishes like imagine you having kids and somebody taking care of them full time more than you take care of them basically and you ask them not to feed them something and they're feeding them like that every day you would be pissed so respect the parents for goodness sake and stop giving them stuff like you know under the rug like obviously i give the kids treats here and there but it's not an everyday thing listen to the parents when it comes to what they want the kids to eat number 10 is their views on screen slash screen time ask them you know what they what they think about screen time and how much they want their kids to be on screens this is where if you guys align in your discipline comes into play because I personally don't see the point kids being on screens for too long. My nanny parents also don't see the point. I've heard of some nanny parents that don't care and it really makes it hard for the kids to want to do anything else. So I personally don't agree with kids um, having a lot of screen time. I'm not saying that it's not nice to have the kids watch TV while you're making lunch or if you're really, really busy and you wanna use screens for like 15, 20 minutes, I'm not saying that I don't agree with that. All I'm saying is that there has to be a limit and you have to align with that and just ask them what what are their views on that number 11 is um are any of them gonna be working from home how often are the parents gonna be home just recently noticed that like the parent both of the parents are home quite often and i'm completely okay with that like i said i have nothing to hide but maybe somebody does not feel comfortable with their nanny parents being at home and that's definitely an important question to ask along with how they view discipline um the dad is mostly at home i'd say like 90 percent of the time he's home but he does travel a few days at a time i'd say like once or twice a month and that's only a recent thing he wasn't traveling as much before but now he's traveling much more regardless he's in his office he's doing work he doesn't bother me i don't bother him unless i have questions it works out like i said i love my job i have zero complaints and it may not be believable, but I actually have zero complaints. I always tell people that when I first went to interview them, I thought this job was too good to be true after I left. I'm like, these guys just seem like they respect their nannies and they love their nannies and appreciate their nannies. And I'm just willing to like put all my effort into this family because I just, I don't know. I love them from the beginning and still till this day, I legit have zero complaints so which is not heard of and i'm gonna brag about them forever they are truly a job that is gonna be hard to leave or hard to be done with um just because they they're just so good to me ask them if they are working from home if they will have boundaries set up with you and the nanny kids because let me tell you some parents don't know how to detach i know you guys love your kids but this is my job. This is what I'm here for and you're making it harder. Is your boss hovering around you when you're working? No, so don't do that to me, please. Because it's hard enough that a boss is hovering over me, but it's also hard that the kids that I'm taking care of are being impacted by that. Number 13, ask them what they are looking for in a nanny. Just ask them like, hey, what are you looking for in a nanny? What are the few top important things to you when it comes to a nanny? Number 14 is, um, ask them for their previous nanny's info. 
um, if they of course had a previous nanny. Also, you can ask them for their nanny info and ask the nanny how she liked her job. That's also a really good way to find out, you know, how it's what it's like to work there. Especially, I didn't do this, but especially if you have like not a great, you know, instinct about this job, I would contact the previous nannies and ask them what it was like to work there. Obviously, take everything you hear with a grain of salt because there's always three sides to the story, the two people's sides and the truth, you know, take it with a grain of salt. But if you feel like, I don't know about this job, let me ask the previous nanny how they enjoyed working here and get in their insight and input on this job. Um, yeah, and also just, it's good to have and it's good to know like they're not afraid to give you like their previous nannies. Uh, info so that they have nothing to hide. Number 15, ask them if they would love to have you long term or short term. And um, that's probably something that, you know, they might say or put in their job description. If so far you're like, you know, I, I vibe with this family, I think this is a good fit. Um, I would ask them like, are you looking to have me for a year or like five years or 10 years, you know, because some families have a nanny or the same nanny for years and years. So it's a good question to ask. Along with that question is asking them if they are planning to expand their family. And you don't have to ask this, but if you feel like they would, you know, they're not gonna be weirded out by answering, it's just good to know like if you're gonna be taking care of more kids in the near future or if they're done. And I don't think it's a bad question to ask. Like, hey, are you guys thinking about expanding this family even more or are you guys good where you're at? Because you will be taking care of their offspring, so. Number 16 is asking them if um, there are any like other random things they would like you to do. For example, running errands or taking the kids to the doctor's appointments. I do both now. I didn't really do them in the beginning, but as the kids are getting older and going to school, my time has been filled with other tasks. Um, I remember I told the nanny dad, I was like, you know, you guys might not need me once the kids are all in school. He's like, uh, no, you can stay here until the kids. And same with the mom. She's like, you can come here with, they love me so much. Oh, I just love them so much. They told me like, I can come there when I have my own kid to just, you know, if I wanted a job still. And I never say never. It's great that that's an option, but there's always stuff to do when you have a house full of kids. And if you're not doing anything kid related, it's a whole house to maintain. You could find so much work to do. If there's a will, there's a way. So just ask them like, if you know, they want you to do any of those random things. Number 17, and this goes along with the raise, but it's a little bit different. Um, if you, for example, want to get paid more because you're there for such a long period of time like a week like if you're there like 40 50 hours a week and you want to get paid more and you know they can afford it you can ask them if you can do a few extra cleaning things a day or you can write down a list from monday through friday every day of extra things you will do every day to be getting paid more if that's an you know an option for you i definitely like that that's an option for me and i think that's amazing because if i'm already here for so long and i'm at your house and I can, you know, stay a little bit longer or I can do a few other deep cleaning things and get paid more for it, I'm going to do that. The nanny parents will want that done or if they're hiring extra side cleaners and they wanna cut that and just give that to you uh, because they appreciate you and you're already there for so long and you know their house best and they can, you know, ask you how to clean things a different way. Like there's just so many, like reasons why it's a good option if you want to make more money uh, definitely ask them if like hey can I just clean up a few more things every day and get paid a dollar or two more number 18 um, this goes along with you know getting a raise or doing more for money is asking them if they are open to raises and also for how often usually I think that's like I think it's like six months to a year. Uh, my first raise I got in nine months after I started. I was taking care of four kids, so technically what I got for a raise is pretty typical for what people get paid for taking care of four kids. So I always ask them, be like, hey, you know, when do you usually give your nannies raises? Is it a year? Is it six months? Number 19 is asking them if their kids have any medical issues. Is there something you need to know about the kids specifically, individually? Asking them if the kids have any allergies. Asking them like what the kids usually like to eat. Uh, this can also be a hard thing to deal with. Like if the kids are so picky, ugh, that goes along with like discipline and like how the parents view parenting. Because like if you're just giving your kid mac and cheese, like breakfast, lunch, and dinner, I mean, come on, like that's no nutritional value and it's really hard to just constantly cook. It's not hard to cook mac and cheese for three times a day, but it's like, really? Your kid does not like one vegetable? I don't know, I have my opinion on that. I truly believe like if you start them off, whenever they put the first piece of food in their mouth with vegetables and fruits, they will like them. Lastly is asking them 
asking the parents what their deal breakers are for them and what they didn't like in their previous nanny so that you, if you really feel like this is a great family, you know, that you want to be a part of, asking them what their deal breakers were with their previous nannies, what they didn't like, what they did like, and just keep that to yourself. I shouldn't do this or shouldn't do that, or I should improve here or there and try to make the parents happy. The key to having a good relationship with your employers is the employers respect the employee and appreciate them and vice versa. There's no other way to have a great relationship. It's both ways. You have to respect the parents and if they don't respect you, then leave. Um, but if you both are respecting each other and going the extra mile for each other and the kids, you will be set and you'll just have such a good experience. And I know that it's hard to come by this stuff. Like I said, my nanny family is a blessing. But I'm telling you, it's worth it to say no to some families and find a family that, you know, like will respect you. And obviously like not every job, mine is an exception, but not every job, you love every little thing about it. Um, but for the most part, you should be happy. You shouldn't be waking up and dreading going to work. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any other questions that you think people should ask at a nanny interview, please leave them down below. Let me know your stories, say hi ask questions because I can do a nanny Q&A. If you guys would like, let me know what you guys think and I'll see you guys in the next video. Good luck at your nanny interviews and I hope you find a good nanny family. Bye!